restaurant first and then Gosney Kitchen? Yeah, you can say selling from... Art Clover. Yeah. Okay, cool. Hi, I'm Selin Kiazm from Art Clover in Shoreditch in London, uh, where I cook modern Turkish food. Today I'm in the Gosney Kitchen and I'm going to be cooking a cheese pitta with charred leeks and crispy potatoes. The first step for this um, cheese pitta is to make a basic cheese sauce. So uh, I've got some butter here, I'm just going to melt that down. So once the butter's uh, melted, we'll just chuck in all of the flour. You just want to whisk that to make a smooth paste. We could use a wooden spoon, everyone has their own preference. You want to cook that on quite a medium heat so the flour cooks out. You don't have that raw flour taste left. It's not so traditional. I kind of make it just how my mum makes it. Just got some milk here. Put that in in sort of two batches. Put in the first one and then just whisk it again to make sure it's nice and smooth and there are no lumps forming. Can you see into this pot or not? <laughs> it's an interesting scent. <laughs> Put in a little bit of salt as well, not too much, because obviously we're going to pop some cheese in. So once it's nice and smooth, you just want to leave it sort of five to ten minutes to cook out. For this recipe, I would use a, a cheese called kasha. Pecorino is more easily accessible. Um, or you could use parmesan or any sort of strong kind of mature and flavour cheese. Um, and then the other one is going to be uh, halloumi cheese. It doesn't actually completely melt down. It kind of gives a little bit of yeah texture and bite to it. Every now and again, you want to make sure you give the sauce a bit of a whisk as well, otherwise you'll end up burning it on the bottom. A friend of mine kind of trying this and being quite shocked at the flavour of it, you know, because it wasn't, it was like a nice subtle kind of smooth, cheesy kind of background rather than being like a really pungent thing. And then we'll put in the halloumi into that. So just have a little taste to make sure the seasoning is okay. Mm, good. So that's the cheese sauce done. Popped it into a tray, leave that to cool down um, and then get on with the rest of the recipe. So we're going to make the pita dough. Uh, here we have some strong flour. In the restaurants I use um, a Turkish brand of flour for that extra bit of authenticity. And then we've got some uh, sugar and some salt. A little bit of fresh yeast here, about 12 grams. If you wanted to use dried, you can just use sort of those seven gram uh, packets. A little bit of olive oil as well. Finally, some water. So really easy, all just goes in and now we're just gonna mix it on a low speed. The dough looks about ready now. You can see it's kind of nice and elastic. It's almost got a bit of a sheen to it. So we'll just roll it into just a little bit of a sausage like that. So I'm going to roll these out to 100 grams. And just keep them covered with a damp cloth as you're doing this whole process and because it can be time consuming to someone who hasn't done it before. So you want to roll them into nice tight little balls and you want to really quite put quite a lot of pressure as you're rolling it around and then to kind of flip it over and just make sure you pinch any, any holes there as well. I'm just going to place them into lightly greased tray. We're going to be placing the dough into a fridge um, to prove slowly. Um, this is my preferred sort of method of doing it. Um, I just think you get a better product in it and you, it's easier to, to roll the pides. You can also leave these out at room temperature and leave them to proof for sort of around 15, 20 minutes and then they'll be ready to go. You could also completely skip this part and just make them odd shapes, it's up to you. So we'll cover this with cling film and we'll just pop it in the fridge. So we're going to char some leeks now uh, in the rock box. So we're literally just going to chuck these straight onto the floor. The rock box is on a high flame, around 450, 500, and we really want to blacken the outside of those. They've already been washed and sort of rinse out the, the tops, which get quite muddy. Next up, potato crisps. So peel potato, and then you just want to find the right thickness. We want to go nice and thin. Or if you really can't be bothered, you could just get a packet ready sorted. I won't tell anyone. You want to keep turning it every few slices, otherwise you'll get a big slant on the potato and start to get very giant slices. So with these potatoes, we're going to drop them into some um, warm water. We just kind of want to rinse off a little bit of the starch off of them. 
And that means that when we come to fry them, they shouldn't stick together. And then take a clean tea towel, flip these leeks as well, move them over so they kind of cook evenly. So with the potatoes, you just want to spread them out, fold them over and just sort of... I'm going to fry these in a, in a pan of hot oil. Uh, you want to be really careful when you're doing this. Don't fill up the pan too much. We're just using a, a sunflower oil or you can use vegetable oil. And you just want to take one of the potatoes and just drop it in to test how hot it is. Just like that, nice and crisp and golden brown. Turn it down a bit so it doesn't carry on heating up. You want to keep them moving so they fry evenly. Okay, so you see the leeks have got a really good char to them now and they'll be nice and soft and sort of steamed in the centre. Leave them to cool down a little bit. The crisp, I'm just going to finish off with a little bit of um, salt and that's it. I'm just leave them to one side. And now onto the leeks. Start off by cutting the greenest part and then the very ends where the root is. Peel off the outer layer, but a little bit of char left on there is quite good. So we're just going to uh, cut the leeks into little chunks. So next we'll make a little dressing for these leeks, just to add another dimension of flavour. I'm going to grate some garlic, got a little bit of white wine vinegar, cider vinegar, lemon juice, whatever you want. A bit of salt, olive oil, and just spoon that over the leeks. And it's best to do it while they're still a little bit warm, because then they'll soak up the flavour even better. That's it, now you want to leave the leeks to sort of marinade for a little while. Okay, now we're at the most exciting part of this process. We're gonna finally make our pitas. So we have the dough that's been resting in the fridge. Try and roll this on a flat, even surface. So we've got a big chopping board here. And use a good amount of flour, enough so it doesn't stick. You just pat it out into a nice circle like that. This is very heavy roll. <laughs> and we're gonna aim for like a oval shape. And now that we've got the width, now you wanna get the length. Once we've finished with this process, it's actually gonna end up a little bit longer than it is now. If you kind of stretch it too thin at this point or too wide, then it's gonna end up falling apart. You won't be able to carry it. So the first thing we're gonna put down is some of this cheese sauce. Leeks in between the sauce. We're gonna basically fold the edges. So that's about a couple of centimeters. That's gonna be folded over. So you wanna spread out the filling. Then we'll season with a little bit of molten salt. Nice dried oregano. In Turkish, this is known as kekik. It's grown up in the mountains and uh, they dry it in big bunches. I remember it from my childhood quite a lot. My, my grandmother would always be there like rubbing these bunches of um, wild oregano. And the final bit is some toasted sesame seeds. So flour your ends of your fingers so the dough doesn't stick to you. Just fold over. And then you wanna start to bring the edges together. So pinch it lightly at first. And then once you've got this kind of rough shape here. Flick it out like that to get the length into it. And then you can adjust the border to sit wherever you want it to and kind of push down on the cheese sauce so it acts as like a glue. And then really pinch these edges well so they don't open up whilst they're baking. Pop it onto the peel and again readjust if you need to before you put it in the oven. And the rock box has been preheated so about 300. We don't want to bake this too quickly. We want it to be a bit more of a gentle bake. So once it's, once it's been in for a little while, we want to just check the bottom to make sure that the heat is where we want it to be. So if you just pull it out, just have a quick peek. And then also maybe give it a little spin so at the back you see it starts to color up. So we pop that back in. And then what I quite like to do is use the peel to pat down on the pide so we get a nice even shape. So now that we've got enough color on the bottom, we just want to pull it a bit further away from the flame, nearer the front of the oven so the heat is not so intense, so it colors gently. So the color's looking really good now. It's nice and crisp, deep golden brown. I'd say that's pretty good to go. You can see the cheese sauce is bubbling away. Got some melted butter I'm gonna brush on the sides. I love doing that every time. It kind of brings it completely to life. Some of our crisps, as many as you like. And then some tulum cheese I've got here. It's actually traditionally made from goat's milk and then aged in goat's skin, which is quite intense. If you can't find tulum cheese, that's fine. You can use a bit of feta cheese, a little bit more of the wild oregano, 
and a few sesame seeds. And that's it. That's the cheese pitta. Now the best bit for the taste. Smells amazing, if I do say so myself. Mmm, delicious. Still piping hot. But it's got all the textures. Got that garlic from the leeks. And that cheese is really pungent. I mean, it's just, I love this dish. Love it, love it, love it. And you can find this recipe on gosney.com. That's about it, guys. Any questions? Open for questions now. Well, it smells good again. You can come around to see this. It's like an Abu's boot. <laughs>